Hey guys, J-Man here for a movie review, Oppenheimer by Christopher Nolan. Uh, Christopher Nolan is um, pretty much a, a hit more times than a miss for me. Um, I really liked Tenet. I, I know that was, people had problems with that movie because of the sound mixing and all that kind of a thing. I did not see it in the theater, unfortunately. I saw it at home on 4K and it was fine. I could hear everything. I thought the idea was cool. Maybe a little long. I didn't do an official review for it, but I really liked it. Um, I do like Batman Begins. Um, I do like The Dark Knight. Uh, I don't, not, The Dark Knight Rises, not as much. Um, I think Begins is probably my favorite out of those. Uh, I, you know, I, I love Memento. That's, gosh, I don't know, that's maybe still his, my favorite movie of his. I saw that three times in the cinema. Uh, that's a great movie. Uh, I've seen I've seen all of his movies. I think Insomnia is the only one I didn't see. Prestige was pretty good. Interstellar was like kind of okay. I, I it got kind of bogged down a bit, so I didn't I didn't uh, I bought it and then I kind of sold it. Um, so I don't I don't I think the only ones I own currently is the trilogy, the Dark Knight trilogy, and also Tenet. Uh, I didn't get Memento because they never came out with a good edition. Like I had a DVD of it and it was just like poor quality. It did have a cool feature where you could watch the movie in order. So that was kind of interesting. But pretty much Nolan, I still like Nolan. I think he's pretty awesome. Uh, obviously, you know, Inception, that's a big one people really like. I also liked Inception. I did see that in the cinema. That was pretty cool. Uh, so I was looking forward to Oppenheimer for a few reasons. Number one, this is going to sound weird, but I actually, so I was never a big war movie guy uh, growing up, but it's funny. I actually like war films that are about the war, but not about the soldiers fighting. So like I saw Saving Private Ryan, I thought, oh, that was a, an enjoyable film. And then I probably, and I never watched it again. Um, Full Metal Jacket, I do enjoy that film. Um, obviously Kubrick has inserted a lot of deeper meaning and a lot of hidden messages and stuff. So I appreciate Kubrick. I own every Kubrick movie. Um, and that's a whole separate thing. It's a war movie, but not really. There's a lot going on. So, um, that's a different kind of thing, but I like the stuff about the war, but not necessarily seeing the soldiers fight it out. Um, I did like 1917. I didn't review it, but wow, that was an experience. That was a great film. So it's weird. Sometimes I really like it if there's fighting or not. But like, again, that one was more like just getting the message and it's like based in the war. I really like Bridge of Spies. My friend Steven, who you guys have seen on my channel, he showed that one to me. So um, that's just a quick history. I'm not going to go through every war movie there is or, you know, you know, Platoon is OK. Apocalypse Now is OK. So um, I was looking forward to this one. So for that reason, because I do like um, uh, war, war films like about the war, like I like that Operation Mincemeat. That was good. So uh, anyway, so that's reason one. Number two is that I didn't have to worry about any sort of weird, like, oh, is this accurate or whatever? Like, you know how, because uh, I do comic book reviews and you always go in there like, oh, they ruined this character. Oh, you know, Batman wouldn't behave that way or Superman wouldn't do that. And, it, 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 you know, and, and it gets a bit, it gets a bit tiresome. You're just like, I just want to see a normal normal movie i just want to see a movie aimed at adults um who want to think a little bit because i'm a cinephile right like i love black and white movies I, I own several silent films lots of silent films i took film courses i got my degree over there and, on the, and behind the wall or behind the shelf over there so anyway i wanted to review a movie that was made for adults um that people can actually enjoy and watch and think and 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 have an experience for once in the theater most of it was shot in IMAX 70 millimeters, so that was very uh, good to watch. The experience itself was amazing. I think the experience of seeing Oppenheimer in an IMAX theater full um, is better than maybe the movie itself, though I do think the film is actually really good. And I am going to review it using my space system, so story, pacing, artistry, characters, enjoyment. Each category is going to get a score between zero to two. Two is the best you can get in any category. If you're watching this video on YouTube, then you are seeing it a week late. Uh, I give my Patreons a week or more ac early access to my comic book reviews and my movie reviews. So if you do enjoy this kind of content and you want to help support uh, support the channel, I really appreciate it. Uh, it's patreon.com slash jman77. I've been on YouTube for about 11 years and they keep kind of messing with me and it's just I've just got tired of it and somebody suggested Patreon, so I'm just going with that. Uh, okay, 
Uh, but I do do live streams Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, so make sure you check those out. Those are obviously open to everybody. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to show this real quick before I get into the review. When I got to the theater, uh, they were giving out actually uh, film cells. So I don't know if you can, and that's not bad. It's got, it's got, it's in this Ziploc thing, so I don't want to take it out, but. So this is Oppenheimer watching the, uh, the bomb. There's the creation. There's him with the press. So they actually gave you uh, a film cell, which I think is so cool. I'm just gonna spend a second talking about how cool this is. I like takeaways. It feels like it's an experience. It feels like I went and saw something. Now they would give these little mini posters uh, at all the movies I would see Marvel and DC and stuff. They stopped doing that because they knew the movies were garbage and there's no point in spending extra resources getting posters for people for movies that are just garbage anyways. Um, Nolan is still a filmmaker. Whether you like all of his films, some of his films or none of his films, you have to admit that the guy has uh, like some you know talent and wants to make films that uh, he wants people to consume and enjoy or whatever. It's not just like I'm making it because I'm gonna make a buck. I don't think anyone thinks they're gonna take this book, um, which is, I think it was Modern modern Prometheus, something like that. Uh, I'm gonna probably get that book. Uh, I don't think someone's like, oh, I'm gonna take this, you know, biography of, uh, or, or auto, you know, well, biography slash autobiography. I'm not sure if the book has any actually, no, I don't think it would have any uh, Oppenheimer's statements, in it, but maybe it does. I'm gonna take this book about Oppenheimer and make a friggin' <clears throat> movie out of it and people are gonna go watch this and make billions of dollars or whatever. I don't think he thinks that way. He's like, I'm interested in this topic. I wanna make something good. So I'm really happy with this with this giveaway here. I think it's really cool. It got me super excited because I was pumped to see the movie. I love the 70 millimeter IMAX stuff. The footage looked amazing. Plus I was getting, plus when I got there, they're like, oh, here you go. I'm like, wow, this is really great. Thank you. And it really got me just into the mood to watch a good film. So uh, kudos to whoever came up with that idea because that was really cool. All right, the storyline. I'm going to give the storyline a two out of two. Look, the way that this is filmed, no spoilers. I mean, these are spoilers. Um, the way that this is filmed is very complicated. There is black, black and white footage, back and forth, flashback. Flashback to the flashback. This happened before this flashback. This is a flash forward. This happened before the flash forward. It's three hours of that. I'm going to get the pacing in a minute. It is three hours of that. It's, it, you need to bring your A game. D don't, I, I, I hate the term shut your brain off. I despise that term. You should always have your brain. That's what separates us from the sponges. Um, if you have watched Inherit the Wind, you know what I'm talking about. Um, we think we're thinking creatures do not turn your brain off and enjoy the movie that makes no sense to me i despise that someone didn't spend six months to a year uh, or in nolan's case i don't know how many years it took for this movie but no one spends six months to a year making this filming film and then spends months editing it for you to just shut your brain off that's a lie that's a misconception do not shut your brain off um yeah storyline here is is it's very complicated however it's done so well that I was into it the whole entire time. I, I actually did not know very much about how the atomic bomb was created. And I certainly didn't know a lot of the stuff uh, about the aftermath. Now it is about Oppenheimer. There's not a bit, there's not gonna be war scenes. There's not gonna be, oh, what did the Japanese think about this? Or, or you know, or what were the Russians up to? Maybe there's gonna be some shots of the Russians. None of that. There's no Hitler. There, none of that stuff is in this movie. It is about him. The people that he comes in contact with and his sort of life and that's exactly what it is and that's what was the movie's called Oppenheimer that's what you get I loved uh, I loved it two out of two for the story pacing I'm gonna give it a two out of two which seems insane because it's three hours did it need to be three hours perhaps perhaps not but I was not bored and I felt very like fulfilled with everything the way that they tell this story because it is still a drama they really, I'm gonna to get to artistry momentarily. They really used a lot of editing tricks and music to pump tension. They continuously pump tension. Like there is just scenes that are happening and you're like, well, it's just a bunch of guys talking, like who cares? But the way it's presented, you feel that, ooh, this is important, right? Um, and I think it was very, very well done in that way. Um, 
and it made the pacing a bit quicker. It didn't seem like three hours. Like I saw The Eternals in the cinema and it was absolutely dreadful. I'd give it a zero for pacing. It was so boring. Nothing was happening. When they were talking, it just felt like they're talking about things that don't matter. This movie, it feels like every dialogue scene matters to something. They're not just talking just to have a scene of talking. So the pacing, I'm gonna give it a perfect score. You guys have, I, I'm, I'm assuming you're seeing where this is leading. Uh, <laughs> the artistry, obviously it's a two out of two. The cinematography is freaking awesome. The music is just cranked. Like it's just boom, boom, boom. And this does not have the problems that Tenet had in the cinema where people were like, you've pumped so much into the background and this music keeps like hitting me hard that I can't understand the dialogue. That happened in the cinema. Now at home, you can adjust your speaker settings to just, you know, take the left and right fronts and backs and turn them down a notch and then you're fine. But I actually didn't notice that problem anyways. It, I have everything cranked at home. But this did not have that issue. You can understand everything. Uh, the 70 millimeter stuff obviously is fantastic. The cinematography is great. Uh, music is awesome. Like the costuming, everything looks good. Um, Oppenheimer, like Killian Murphy, man, that guy's awesome. We're gonna get to characters momentarily. Um, looked, he looked good. Like he's got the hat and everything. Look, it look, it looks like the guy. Um, let's move on to the characters. The characters, I'm giving it two out of two, um, and I'm gonna give the enjoyment factor a two out of two. I'm giving this a ten out of ten. Um, now this is first viewing, and I was pumped to see this movie, so maybe ten out of ten is too high. I will rewatch it again if I change my mind. I will let you know. I don't think that I will though. Um, the characters here. I mean, Robert Downey Jr., wow, what a performance. Everybody in this movie gives a performance, and there is a lot of actors. Bloody James Remar showed up, man. My buddy Ajax from Warriors, man. Keep going, dude. You're the man. I, I mean, as soon as he came on with that voice, I was like, oh, hell yes, James Remar is in this. I, I, oh, man, I love the Warriors, and um, Ajax is just one of the, my favorite characters. And, oh, man, I, can't, I couldn't believe I was so happy to see him. There's a lot of actors that pop up. Um, uh, Olivia Thurbley, I think that's how you pronounce her. She's from Dread. She played Anderson, Judge Anderson. I love her in that movie. I think she's amazing. I, she's only in it for a little bit. I was like, oh my God, it was so great to see her on the big screen. I think she's a great actress. Um, but yeah, Killian Murphy, wow. This guy's performance is like crazy. Robert Downey Jr., Jesus Christ, man. Wow. This... I mean, I kind of forgot I was watching it. Like, you, you just got sucked into it. And, uh, I mean, Emily Blunt is awesome, too. Like, I don't know. It, it, it's tough to review this movie. I just, so Enjoyment Factor 2 out of 2, 10 out of 10. Is this a 10 out of 10? See, sometimes the space system doesn't work perfectly. Like, it's it'd be difficult to review 2001 A Space Odyssey. Now, I'm not saying this is near 2001 A Space Odyssey. There's no way. Uh, but 2001 A Space Odyssey is a 10 out of 10, but it has to be a 10 out of 10. You, it, but what's the story? Well, the story is huge, right? It's like the evolution of man, but there's all these like, you know, themes and that Kubrick does. But like, so it's hard to review that movie. Like, what am I supposed to say? Like, obviously for Oppenheimer, the guarantees are, the characters are great. The performances are amazing. The artistry is awesome. And I happen to really enjoy it. So the last three letters of space, for me, that's a no brainer. So... That's a six out of 10 without even discussing the story or pacing. Here's where you're gonna get uh, some people lost. The story, maybe it was shot too complicated for some people and they might think like, eh, I couldn't get into this, it was kind of weird. And my, people might think it's a little bit too slow because it's three hours and they might get bored. So the minimum, even if you get, even if you ding those categories, I mean the minimum that this movie could really get out of a 10 scale has to be like, a seven or eight minimum, really. Like if you wanna ding it for pacing and ding it for the story and the way it was presented. But I can't really see anyone giving this less than like a seven or eight out of 10 if you're any kind of film reviewer. Like, again, I'm saying 10 out of 10, that's my opinion. Um, but even objectively, like you can't say it's shot poorly or the music's crap or something like that, or it looks bad. So the artistry section has to get full marks. The characters are amazing. Great performances has to get full marks. Enjoyment factor, that is personal, but I can't, you know, so maybe you, you ding it there. You ding the pacing. It's a little too long. Maybe you ding the story. You give it a seven out of 10. I can't see anyone giving this less than a seven. 
So even objectively, a seven would be where most people should be at. Um, if someone's saying this is a trash movie or whatever, they're probably not film people or they're probably just want to see, you know, fun movies that are popcorn flicks and they just want to have a good time. And there's something to be said for that. My entire thing here is <laughs> popcorn fun movies. So obviously I love that. Army of Darkness is in my top 10 of all time. Uh, I love the Flash Gordon 1980 movie, top 10 of all time. Obviously Indiana Jones, top 10, right? Star Wars. But you're allowed to, you know, I, I, so if you're one of those people, then maybe this isn't really for you. Uh, but if you're anyone who wants to enjoy uh, a good movie made for adults, then definitely see this. My theater was packed all ages. I was really happy. I was pretty happy to see a packed theater with a lot of different age range. Um, gave me a little bit of hope for film. <laughs> So there is that too. But uh, a lot of people saw Barbie. There's a lot of women dressed up in the full pink skirts and everything. But people dressed up all pink for Barbie. So that's kind of exciting for them, I suppose. Um, not the same crowd that saw Oppenheimer. And I'm not judging either crowd. Uh, but I'm glad that I did see Oppenheimer <laughs> first. Will I see Barbie? I don't know. Maybe I'll see it at home. Because uh, I do like Margot Robbie and I like Ryan Gosling. So I'll, I'll watch it at home probably on streaming. But uh, there you go, guys. That's my opinion on Oppenheimer. Again, if you're seeing this on YouTube, you would have seen it a week early if you were on the Patreon. And um, if not, that's totally cool. I will see you guys on the next video. Until next time.